Hey, it's Popner here, and in this tutorial, we'll be creating a modular sci-fi hallway. So to get started, let's add in a cube and hit tab to go into edit mode. Then in face select mode, let's delete the front and back faces of the cube to make it hollow. This will be the base for our hallway. Remember that this will just be one modular section of our final hallway, and we'll be repeating this base to actually create a longer hall. Then I'll change the origin of the hall so that the floor's position will be zero. To do this, let's set the origin of the hall to the floor by selecting the bottom face, pressing Shift S, and clicking cursor to selected to bring the 3D cursor to the floor. Then hit tab to go back into object mode and right click and set the origin of the cube to the cursor. Now if you go into the object properties tab and change the Z location of the object to zero, the floor will be aligned with the center of the world. Now to scale this, go back into edit mode and select the top face and press GZ on your keyboard to move the face along the Z axis to make the hallway more narrow or wide. Don't move any faces on the X or Y axis just yet, and make sure you're not scaling anything in object mode. You often won't have to do this, but this will help later on with creating modular assets. In edit mode, click edge select and select the top edge of the hall. Press Ctrl B to use the bevel tool, and we can bevel that edge to create a more interesting shape. Remember that we're not scaling anything on the X or Y axis yet, but if you want to make the hallway narrower or wider, we can select the top faces and move them on the Z axis. To make editing faster, we can use the mirror modifier. To do so, first select the loop cut tool and cut the cube in half relative to the X axis and delete one half of your hallway. In the modifiers tab, add the mirror modifier and mirror the hallway on both the X and Y axis. Now if we make any changes to a face, it'll automatically be mirrored, making our work a lot easier. I'll add some loop cuts to the side as well as the floor of the hallway, and slightly move the center faces of the floor downward to create the walkway. I'll also add a cut at the end of the hallway and select the last faces of the wall and ceiling and extrude them inward for extra detail by right clicking and extruding by normals. Let's select the floor faces and make it a separate object by right clicking and separating it by selection. We can apply the solidify modifier to the newly created plane which will allow us to make boolean cuts to the floor. To do this, let's add in a plane, rotate it 90 degrees on the Y axis, scale it down on the Z axis, and add two loop cuts. Then let's add two more loop cuts on the inside face and move and scale the center face until you get a similar shape. We can now add the solidify modifier to the plane to give it thickness. Then let's click on the floor object and give it a boolean modifier. Make the plane we just created the cutter object and line up the plane so it's towards the right edge of the floor. Now if we move the mirror modifier below the boolean in the stack, you should be able to see the cut reflected on the other side of the floor. You can mess around with the cutter shape and the thickness values to get something that looks nice, and once you do, just hit the eye icon next to the plane to hide that. Once you have something that looks good, apply all the modifiers. You don't have to do this part, but if you want to give your edges a smoother look, you can add a subdivision surface modifier, turn the number of subdivisions up to 3, and in edit mode, select all the edges and press Shift E to crease the edges. You can mess around with the values of the creased edges to get different looks. Right click and select Shade Smooth, and for more customization over the smoothness, you can go to the Object Data Properties tab and select Auto Smooth under Normals. Before creating the other modular parts, let's texture the base we've created so far to make texturing easier later on. I'll download a metal image texture from textures.com, and in Blender, let's select our object and open up the shading tab. Press Shift A to search for and add in an image texture. From here, we can open up the image we downloaded in the image texture node and plug that into the principled BSDF. If the texture you downloaded also has a roughness and metallic map, we can plug those into the appropriate slots as well. For now, let's apply the same material to the floor, and with both the hall and the floor selected, let's cube project the texture in edit mode. Then in the UV tab, we can scale the UVs to the right size. 
To get started on making the modular parts, let's go into the top orthographic view, select both the base and the floor, and press Shift D and then Y2 to duplicate what we have so far and move it on the Y axis by 2 meters. If you've properly scaled the hallway as mentioned earlier, the duplicated hallway should seamlessly combine with the original. We'll now be creating a right turn in the hallway. Let's duplicate this again by pressing Shift D and Y2. Now let's rotate the new duplication by 90 degrees on the Z axis by pressing RZ90. Make sure that all the modifiers have been applied. Press Shift while selecting both the first and second duplicate and join the two by pressing Shift J. Do the same with both floors. Now in edit mode, we can select edges on both sides and join them by right clicking and bridging the edges. This might not work with all the edges at once, so try bridging a couple edges at a time. Then to give this part of the hallway more space, let's add two vertical loop cuts to the new faces that were created, and in top orthographic view, let's switch to transparent mode, select all the middle vertices, and move them on both the Y and X axis by the same value. Now to create a left turn, we can just select the right turn part we created, duplicate it, and press Ctrl M followed by X to mirror the right turn. To create a part of the hallway that goes off in three directions, we can duplicate both the right and left turns, place them in the same location, and delete the faces that overlap in edit mode. Then let's join these two parts by selecting both and pressing Shift J and in edit mode bridge the appropriate edges. To create a part of the hallway that goes off in four directions, we can duplicate what we just created, mirror it on the Y axis, and repeat the same steps. Now we can start adding more details and parts. Let's go back and select the first base mesh we've created and go into edit mode. To add some panels, I'll select one of the top faces and press Shift D to duplicate it. Then let's right click and make the selection a separate object. Make sure not to move this object in object mode, but with the new mesh selected, let's add a solidify modifier. Back in edit mode, we can add loop cuts and mess around with the faces to give the hallway more detail. Once finished, add a mirror modifier to give the other side of the hall the same panels. I'll repeat the same steps with the ceiling as well and to add pipes. To add more detail to the walkway, I'll duplicate the middle floor faces, make it a separate object, give it a couple subdivisions in edit mode, and apply a solidify as well as a wireframe modifier. Then to add railings, I'll extrude a cylinder and rotate the top 45 degrees on the x-axis and repeat the same step again so the face is completely turned 90 degrees. I'll extrude this face on the y-axis and duplicate the entire shape and bridge these two faces. Then we can scale this appropriately and add an array modifier as shown to add more railings. We can also use the array modifier on the x-axis to essentially mirror the railing on the other side of the hallway. For the lights, I'll add in a cube near the ceiling and scale it down on the z and x-axis. Let's give it a couple loop cuts, inset two of the top faces and extrude them out so they attach to the ceiling. Then I'll select the bottom faces, inset them, and extrude them upwards. We can then create an emissive material and apply it to the faces we just extruded. Let's also find some more textures and apply those to the different details in our scene to give it more variety. Once applied, we can start repeating the same steps of duplicating and bridging the edges of meshes in edit mode to make them modular with the props as well. Some meshes, such as the floor, will be harder to duplicate and join in edit mode, so we can just remake these by using the base meshes. Now we can start putting all the modular parts together. 
Because the size of all the modular parts are 2 meters or multiples of 2 meters, we can easily put all the parts together by moving them on either axis by exactly 2 meters at a time. We can bring these parts together by creating cables. To add cables, add in a Bezier curve and delete the vertices in edit mode. Then make sure your projection depth is set to surface in the tool settings and draw the shape of your cable on a surface. Then in your object data properties tab, increase the bevel depth to add thickness to the cables. Repeat these steps to place cables all around the hallway. To make the scene more visually interesting, we can add in some area lights and characters, and there you go. By using this type of workflow, you can not only create modular hallways, but also lots of other environment pieces such as streets and buildings. I hope this tutorial was useful, and if you want more tips to make the scene look more interesting, you can check out my environment design videos as well. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below, and make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you guys next time.